So, in the spirit of Favorite Anime April, I'm just gonna share some character designs that I really love. Reasons will range from the simplistic, like, I just like how they're drawn, to slightly more in-depth explanations for why they appeal to me. So, let's just get right into it. If we gotta start somewhere, it might as well be the reason you probably clicked on this video, Hiroaka. Sorry, but you gotta please the YouTube algorithm somehow. That being said, it wouldn't be in this video if I didn't enjoy the vast majority of character designs. I love the fact that All Might is drawn and shaded more in the way American superheroes in comics are, seeing as how that's clearly his inspiration, and the existence of quirks means Horikoshi was able to draw some of his characters without the restraints of typical… anatomy, even by anime standards. Oh, this character's supposed to be dark and brooding? Literally just make him a crow then. Revelry in the dark. Why does he keep saying that? But that's an extreme example, and while it may seem a little straightforward, I like how the rest of the class have a lot of their personalities and quirks also showcased through their designs. Deku is literally bright-eyed and bushy-haired, not uncommon of shonen protagonists. Bakugo's is basically a mini-explosion that can't be tamed. Kirishima has a sturdy and manly look to his hair and features, while Sue is just a frog in human form. Kaminari actually has a lightning bolt in his hair, and do I even have to mention Todoroki? Again, all of this is rather obvious, but there's something nice about that. The majority of the cast are fun to look at, and between their hair and costumes, they cover basically the entire visual spectrum, so there's something for everyone. I'm also a fan of some of the more simplistic hero costume designs we see with Kaminari and Jiro. Simple, but stylish and effective. And then there's Deku's costume, which has of course gone through about as much development and evolution as he has. All with some fairly obvious symbolism. But what can I say, I really love that bluish-green color scheme. And while I do think that some of the designs for their costumes could be improved, I don't terribly care for Kodas per se. For the most part, I enjoy them, and especially the additions and improvements a lot of the class get later on. My favorite of which is definitely Kirishima's, because I don't believe this has been addressed in the anime, but the reason why he gets sleeves is because he was worried that if he was rescuing people, like carrying them to safety while having his quirk active, that he would accidentally cut or injure them. And so the sleeves are meant to keep that from happening, and that's just the sweetest thing. Gah, I love Kirishima. Okay, so the more I was digging into things, the more I realized I like the designs of too many characters but more importantly, that I don't understand quite why I like them. So, rather than racking my brain trying to squeeze every bit of meaning out of every artistic detail of every character, this next little bit is just going to be me outlining some more general themes of design and characters I like that fit within those themes. Alright? Cool. Cool. I might have talked about Princess Principal in a greater capacity, but seeing as how I already dedicated an entire video solely to the fact that I love basically how the entire cast and background characters are designed, that would seem a bit redundant. But if you haven't seen that video and want to check it out, it'll be the first link down below. But another series whose designs I enjoy with Princess in the title, yes that's the loose connection I'm using, is Princess Tutu. For one, I enjoy that all the main characters have relatively normal hair colors. Not that I'm against absurd colorations, I tend to love them actually, but in the age of having every other main character distinguished by their pink hair, it's nice to see that particular palette applied to Duck's friend PK, who by all accounts plays more of a supporting role. The same can be said for Lily and her blonde hair that often sticks out as an indicator of foreigners in anime. As for Duck herself, I especially enjoy the clear distinction between her and Princess Tutu. A good mixture of looking similar yet different enough. And the same goes for her duck form too, it's adorable and just works. Like a somewhat odd Pokemon evolution. Because I do really enjoy that her base design doesn't just quack duck. Except for later when she wears an outfit that is just the duckiest thing ever. But still, that's cute and I like it because it is just that, an outfit. It's not explicitly tied to her character. And while I'm not the biggest fan of Tutu's design, I can appreciate the symbolism of the white that's clearly a representation of Princess Tutu's power, somewhat overtaking Duck as seen through her hair. And when it comes to the rest of the cast, I really like Rue's design. Her aesthetic is just perfect and I will hear nothing to the contrary. I also made a video about this topic, but it wasn't specific to designs as much as it was what eyes can convey. That being said, I am an absolute sucker for eyes in anime. They're without a doubt my favorite aspect of a design, and can make or break one for me. And when it comes to eyes, oh my god, I love every set featured in New Game. There's just something about the colors and style of shading that adds so much life and emotion to them. 
but at the same time they manage to not go over the top to the point where they're distracting. Each pair of eyes perfectly complements the rest of the character they're attached to, be it in just going along with their typical color scheme like Alba, or cutting a stark contrast like with Ko or Hifumi. And they're just so damn pretty, like sapphires or rubies or some purple gem. Amethyst. I'm pretty sure they're one of the reasons why I love basically all the character designs in this show. And I'm also a fan of more unique eyes. From episode 1, I love the lookers of most of the cast of Death Parade. Visually interesting without again being distracting and really adding to the whole supernatural aspect of the series. Also just as a general comment, I really appreciated the older aesthetic present with Deckham and especially Nona when it came to their outfits in the show. It just fit the overall vibe and feel really well. But back to Unique Eyes, I of course have to mention the most recent entry into my list of favorites, those belonging to Shinomiya Kaguya. They're just the right amount of different and striking, with the red taking form of a flame. I just want those eyes to step on me. Did I say that out loud? Okay, so this one is going to be pretty quick, but basically, I really appreciate time skips, in part because I like to see how a character changes. A recent example that I thought did this really well was Run With The Wind. Not only with the ending that aged up the main cast, but there were also several times we got to look back at the high school versions of both Haiji and Kakeru. And despite it only being a difference of a few years, the character designer took care to actually make subtle changes. In the endless abyss of question marks that is the age of anime characters sometimes, I appreciate when someone puts in the effort to illustrate those small variations actual people go through. Like with the eyes in New Game, it adds a nice degree of life to the overall designs. And then there's changing a character design in the sense of adapting it as time goes on in real life. Like say the case with a reboot or a continuation. An example I like to point to is Lupin. I enjoy the fact that his character has been continually modernized as more parts have come out without losing the heart or core of his design. This is though interestingly contrasted with Fujiko's design which has gone through many different iterations throughout the various installments. And then there's of course Lupin's different colored jackets, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Speaking of which, I enjoy it when characters are given more than one outfit to strut their stuff in. And I'm not talking about simply school clothes versus casual wear versus sometimes the gym uniform. I mean full-on, different, and stylish outfits. Again, it works towards that same end of making the world and characters more believable and real. It's for that reason that I love the multiple outfits pretty much every character in Shirobako and Sakura Quest have. Both of which are not so coincidentally by PA Works and the same character designer, Sekiguchi Kanami. Adds a really nice flair that you don't get to see in a ton of shows. It's also one of the reasons I really enjoyed Yudu Camp. The consistent contrast in comfy camping clothes was… cool. These, along with the backgrounds, made the series anything but visually stale or dull. I am so confused! Okay, these didn't really fit into any other category, so here we go. One of my favorite aspects of Konosuba is how all the main characters have a primary color they're associated with. And like with Princess Principal and Tutu, they're all so varied and striking without using extreme hair colors as well, that bombacity instead coming out mostly through their outfits. I mean, there is Aqua, but she's both a goddess and useless, so take your pick, she's kind of the exception to the rule. Oh, but also regarding her, a fun tidbit you may not have picked up on is her hair tie. The three beads that make it up take the same form as the molecule H2O. Because water. So make that a useless and redundant goddess. And then there's Hunter Hunter. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something so simple yet wonderful when it comes to the designs of, well, a lot of the characters, but especially the main four. They all boast unique styles and even just demeanors that are well presented in their designs. Just one glance and you're able to infer a lot about them. It's like what I was talking about with Hiroaka, only here Togashi managed to do it with strictly human characters, at least at the beginning of the series. Also on the note of don't know 100% why I like their design, but the main trio of The Promised Neverland are all perfect. Anyway, to close out this video, I'm going to discuss one final design that I love in slightly more depth. Hikari from Demichan. Complete and total shocker, I know. But in actuality, the designs of not just her, but the main trio are all relatively simple. Their school uniforms are certainly among the more basic I've seen in anime, but that isn't necessarily a negative here, because instead the focus is drawn more to their hair, faces, and eyes, the things that define them more as demis in the first place than anything they're wearing. 
but onto Hikari specifically. Just starting off, her name means light, which, I kid you not, at the time of writing this, I am just now realizing how hilarious that name is considering she's a freaking vampire. How am I just now getting that? I wish I was pulling your leg with this, but no, I am just that dumb. Anyway, her name is obviously consistent at least, with her hair being bright yellow. And then there's the buns that add a bit of flair to an otherwise pretty standard hairstyle. We also see in the opening that, if it wasn't clear as day already, those buns are meant to be an allusion to bat ears, adding to her otherwise lacking vampire aesthetic, at least from a stereotypical standpoint. But, there's actually another reference that her hair buns call back to that's an even stronger link to her blood-sucking brethren. If you look at the version of Dracula depicted in the Francis Ford Coppola film from 1992, you can see him, in the beginning, sporting what seems like an honestly more exaggerated version of Hikari's hairstyle. It's a really cool nod to one of the character's more well-known incarnations, and it's funny to me that this is a rare case in manga or anime where an aspect of a character is actually downplayed. But yeah, just adds to my growing list of reasons for why I love Hikari. When all is said and done though, obviously these are just my preferences. But I think there's something to be said about what makes character designs memorable. Their ability to be instantly recognizable is certainly one, and that's something animation absolutely aids, as you're able to have more diverse hairstyles, body shapes, and colors that add to their appeal and ultimately make them more worth remembering in your mind. And in one way or another, all of these characters accomplish just that for me. But as I just said, those are just my thoughts, and as always, I'd love to hear what you have to say. What are some of your favorite character designs or designers? Least favorite? Feel free to be as descriptive or succinct as you wish. Any other thoughts can also be left down below. Thank you so much for watching though, and as always, an especially big thanks goes out to my awesome patrons. Hiniku Ho, Overjoyed Soup, MV Pino, James Morton, Marbled Ranger, Spudge, Bjorn, and everyone else whose support helps make videos like these possible. If you'd like to join those awesome people and help support the channel, links to that Patreon, my shirts, and everything else are either down below or on the screen right now. Leave a like and click that bell icon to keep up to date, follow me on Twitter, stay awesome, and I'll see you next time.